Welcome to Healthy Rebel Radio. This is episode 145. I'm your host, Dr. David Dizer, and I'm here with my co-host, Amy Lane. Good morning. Good morning. Let's jump into it. It's Healthy Rebel Radio, and we're back. Welcome, everyone. How's it going? Me? Yeah, you. How are you? I'm good. A little sleepy. A little sleepy. Long, long nights. Long nights. Ever's been a trip. We thought we were on a roll there for a while. Mm. Well, we were on a roll. We thought we had it solved. Mm. As soon as you get confident, anything about your kids, look out. Never say anything positive about your kids or get in your head that things are going great. I make that same mistake every day. Don't they call that insanity? I do it all the time. Every time I say something like, wow. This is like, whatever. It's like literally the next morning, the shoe will drop. And how well behaved are they? And then they tear the house down. Oh, yeah. And they like, come up with something completely new and torturous. But poor little Ivy. I think she has teeth. Who yeah. knows? I don't care anymore. We had two or three nights in a row and then the highs and lows. I mean, She's also very emotional, which she usually isn't. Her feelings are getting hurt really easily. So I think that's add to, added to the whole drama of the situation. Yeah. She's usually just so level. But right now she's just like, I am so emotional. I'm feeling my feelings. Soon you'll hear, hear me yelling river from the next room. <laughs> Did we talk about river on this? Oh, yeah. we've talked about river. River. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've been telling people about that. It, it strikes me funny every time it. I think about it. Well, because it makes it light. Yeah. I was thinking about that the other day, how like lately I've been entertaining myself just to make like 2019. We haven't really talked about it publicly, but 2019 has been mm-hmm. ugh, the worst. Like we've had... Not the worst, obviously. We. It's been pretty bad. It's been a terrible year, point blank. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're in December of 2019 here, and we're ready for it. To I want to just burn it. Like, oh, yeah. aside from ever, like being ever's first year on Poor Earth. Thing. Like she's been obviously like she's a been dream. The, the joy of it, and she tolerated everyone Not and even everything. The just joy fine. of it. She would have been of any year. The highlight of it, but yeah. everything else around it. Yeah, like it's right. been a horrid year. Anyway, I've been thinking about lately how I've been like kind of entertaining myself in my head, mm-hmm. just saying funny things. You have to. Oh, you have to. Like the other day, I saw this girl, and uh, she was coming out of a smoothie bar, and she had like a smoothie in her hand. She had like this smirk on her face. Yeah. And she was all adorable, and she like took a picture of her Aww. of her smoothie. And I walked by, and in my head, I thought, "No one cares, Brenda." <laughs> and I like burst out laughing. Like no yes. shade to Brenda because for sure I am like. I could like a Rolodex of my head of like drinks I've made. Like I and posted one hundred percent, and nobody cares, Amy. Like I get it, but it was just like it made me laugh so hard. Oh yeah. And then I thought, good for you, Amy, entertaining yourself. Definitely, you have keep to. it light. I mean, that's a good one to share because most of the ones that you share are so dark. Yeah, I'm inappropriate. Her sense I love of humor and is inappropriate sense of humor. Ridiculously dark. It's I, not inappropriate. It's just dark. Yeah, I, I like dark. I do. I I can't help it. I, I try not to. Your whole family is like that. Oh, yeah, me and my sister are bad, bad. You don't, no one can listen to conversations with us. When David first joined in our conversations, he was just like, this is not funny. No. This is just horrendous. Like, it's not about other people, it's about ourselves, but it's dark. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty dark. Mm. But, you know, it, like, it's obviously the quickest way to lighten a situation. But the, the thing about it is that strikes me funny. And what I find weird about it is when it, the situation doesn't need to be lightened. That that's yeah, just your sense I, of humor. I know we're bad. We go very dark. It's... Well, and now our our oldest has a has a sense of humor that oh we're thinking is it's kind pretty, of similar. It's, yeah, it's not good. But it might be a nervous thing, and it could be a nervous thing for you guys. Too. One of my nephews has it, and like yeah. we had to like train yeah. him. Like you there's can't jokes do this you can in tell, public. and you can't like I sometimes try to test it out around certain people. Like, and I have a girlfriend that like no. She doesn't get it and doesn't think it's funny. So I like it? rope it in. I'm just like, oh, mm, right, right. Won't do that around. And we had to tell my nephew like, there's it's some time jokes that to are practice being present. Yeah, there's safe jokes with us. And then I remember when you tried to get in on it and you didn't. Oh, it was so funny. It, like, <laughs> I should not to, join in on. No, things. and he can't. He learned that he can't because he just goes the wrong. <laughs> Sometimes I try and join in on sarcasm. And yeah, it, it's it doesn't. Awful. It's so bad. It's so bad. It can be very uncomfortable professionally, because people are sarcastic in general, and then they think that I am too. Yeah, and you're not. Just it's always best. Also, never do the jokes, the sayings. David doesn't know sayings. Never do the so, sayings. So, like, 
and our daughter definitely inherited that. Like, True will look at me and go, no way, hokey pokey. And I'm like, that's <laughs> not. And, like, she gets that from David. Yeah, yeah. David, I'm just always like, please don't say sayings outside the house. No. Please. Don't like, do it. Don't do it. You always use them wrong. One time I was... Um, I was I, we, I was talking about something with a with a patient and and something had happened like I dropped something and I said oh sugar like that and they said are you saying to avoid sugar <laughs> and I said well that's a good idea but I was just using an expression well of, I remember the actual height of when you came home and told my sister and I off about our sister I remember if what, I can tell the story is this going to be embarrassing. It's so funny. Okay, well, you can tell it. I, it's mortifying. I, I'm, my skin is so thick. Okay, so it was when David was in school, and he had this professor, and he was had had this tight relationship with this professor, and it was they were having this private conversation at the end of like a class, and um, the professor said he was telling a story, and then at the end, the professor goes was talking about his brother, and then he said, and then he died, and. You were so used to Allison oh and I God. that you burst out laughing, and then <laughs> and then David looked at him, and the man was crying. Oh my God! It wasn't funny. And he, David came home, and the best part was, is David came home, and I was on the phone with my sister, and he's like, "You two have ruined it for me." And like, we just burst. I used to be so sweet. Like, and we were like, both of us were like hyperventilating, <laughs> oh, crying. It felt so bad. Like. And it was so sad because he was just trying to join in on ours. And then yeah. he took it out into the world. It didn't pan out. It turns out to be a nervous thing. What? When you act, when you act like that. What part? When you laugh at, when you laugh not at, but when you react well, in I that manner. I think when you've been through, I think it's different. No, because I mean, a lot of comedians, like they touch on the topics that are like terrible yeah. because Fair. you have to lighten. Like there's certain things in, like for us, I, again, I'm, I don't want you to do it. No, it's, I will not. It's not safe I am, for you to take out into the world, this obviously. Was, guys, this was eight, ten years yeah, ago. Yeah, this was a long time ago. And my sister and I still talk about it probably like once a week. And we'll be like, and then That's he so died. Frequent. And then once a week. It's so funny. They, like you, like you, we, we perversed oh, your gosh. sweet little sweet mind. Then you went out and we're like, I'm going to be funny. I and just then, didn't see it coming. And then it wasn't funny. It was so sad. I was, I was taken back. I didn't know how thing. that story was going to so end. then he had to. I thought it was going to be something because good. Because if, if Allison and I end things like that, we're being dark and funny. Right. It's just none of it's funny. I can't even. Now okay. I'm thinking about we dark things. On. We need to move on. <laughs> need, I'm laughing I feel like this is going to that... go into more stories that are just... That would not be appropriate. No, because... there's so many. Well, okay, so today, guys, here's what we're talking uh, about. Well, I just have to say one that I can't stop laughing about. Okay, all right. Tell me. I had this childhood cat. Oh, my god! That when I moved away, my dad asked me to leave the cat because my dad at the time was sick and he felt that it was giving, you know, the cat. What he died. The, just wait. The cat. <laughs> okay, I was trying to. Like... No. <laughs> See? No, that's not good. That's not funny. You have to learn. So we, about the cat. So I left the cat there. The cat was like good responsibility for my mom. Like he felt and then he cuddled with the cat and stuff. My dad was sick at the time. Anyway, the cat died. And my sister was like, said to my mom, like, are you going to tell Amy? And she said, no, the cat's been dead for like five years. Oh it's still it's no one, so long. no one has told me. No one's telling me that this cat is... So I'm pretending I don't know that oh the cat goodness, is dead. Amy. Oh my goodness, And it's literally one of the highlights. Like, it's the saddest thing. I love this cat. But, like, the fact that they've all made it so weird. And oh, no one will cat. tell me... Sweet cat. Still living. It, well, no one will tell me that the cat died. Oh my gosh. So, and everyone's just like, let's not tell Amy. Next time we go home, we have to try and find that cat. I'm just going to be like, you know what? I might bring a gift and be like... Oh, oh my gosh. This is, this is for the cat. Uh, anyway. Oh my this God. is what I mean. Like you have to laugh. What am I gonna do? No, exactly. I cried when I found out. Obviously, Definitely. that the cat passed away. But what are you gonna do? Oh my goodness. Well, let's jump into some things that maybe people will find beneficial <laughs> instead of this. <laughs> instead of this conversation, although um, I think it it we we obviously have it as a mechanism for lightening our life. Mm. You know, we all go through dark things. Mm -hmm. And um, for many people, this is a, a dark time of life. Mm -hmm. Especially if you're kind of a 
the the later version of millennials mm-hmm. and uh, um, what are they called what are we called the more millennial elders the millennial elders if you're a millennial elder right it's now out there you're you know your grandparents and your great uncles and aunts and maybe even um, your parents maybe are even sick your parents and, it's, yeah. it's, it's it's a dark time mm-hmm. and uh yeah so you know anything you can do to lighten the mood that's appropriate anyways mm. uh is helpful <laughs> try and stay appropriate that's my professional opinion anyway, don't talk to me today we're talking about safe fasting so i want to i want to talk about this topic because i gave a lecture on it um, a couple weeks ago and i think it's really important because a lot of people who listen to our show um, obviously they're interested in weight loss and general wellness and longevity mm. and health and feeling good optimal optimizing optimizing the vessel the optimizing the vessel the most important thing is optimizing your metabolic health which means to be of a lean weight mm. uh, of, a, of a normal body mass index of a normal bmi and getting there just it totally sets you into a different place of like it takes the struggle away mm-hmm. and the resting place is so much easier you know definitely mm. it plus uh, it's like a pillar and it's then a, you can like move it, on with your focus to things that are more it is the pillar if we talk about the if we talk about the top four um, obesity is definitely a risk factor in cardiovascular disease, cancer, and Alzheimer's. Mm. So, you know, being of a lean body weight is incredibly important and fasting helps. Mm-hmm. So people are trying tons of different types of fasting. So I decided to give a little lecture on it and, and go through. I don't think I've talked on the show so far about safe fasting. Anyways, I think it's really important because... You no, know, and the lecture was... He planned this lecture and just kind of tossed it out there and it was received overwhelmingly like there was not enough space for seating it was like here in vancouver yeah, it was unreal it turned out to be a way bigger event and then they it, he's been asked to do it subsequently again so i feel like obviously people are very interested in safe fasting we're gonna get the same one and i think i'm gonna post i recorded it i think i'll post it on youtube okay i just haven't done that yet i haven't mm. got around to it mm. but um we'll go through a, a, a little bit of it today really the important part is what types of fasting are there and who is it not safe for? Mm. Because I think that's the key because everyone's jumping into 16-8 or OMAD mm. or you know, FMD. People are jumping into all these different types of fasts. Mm. And for some people, it's totally not appropriate. Mm. So I'd like to highlight some mm. ways to either make it appropriate or to... And I'll say right away, for women that are breastfeeding, not your time. Oh, definitely not. Breastfeeding, pregnant, trying to become you know, pregnant. I think, because I think about it in two different ways. And I feel like a lot of people, like I was talking to someone that was taking something detoxifying while they're breastfeeding. And I was trying to gently tell them like how, what a terrible idea that is. Yeah. Because detoxifying while breastfeeding, like... I just can. I just think of like you're going to be releasing it in all the ways, including breast milk, and I just oh, think yeah. it's a bad time for any of that. Like, Even any, any type of detoxifying, like when you when you say detoxifying, the first thing that comes to my mind is binding things with sulfur. Mm. The second thing is flushing your colon. Mm. Both of those things you don't want to do when you're breastfeeding. No. When you flush your colon, you lose minerals, mm. which of course your breast milk would suffer. Mm-hmm. When you bind things with sulfur. Um, or MSM or cilantro or corella mm. or spirulina. I when know. you bind things, mm. like these things are all really effective mm. and you then excrete them. I feel like people and don't, don't talk about be, that. Like don't talk who about knows how much taking gets in corella the and spirulina. And I just don't think you should do it while you're breastfeeding. Anymore. Or or um, I don't think you should do it if you don't have a plan. Like uh-uh. people who are taking 10 corella pills a day and mm. then they come in and say, oh, I'm super tired. Well, okay. So you're, what have you been doing? Not only that, like taking it consistently, like you shouldn't be like in a state of detox for that long. Like it's crazy. That's the point. It's exhausting. I did it that. Really, when I first started really out, I was just like researching what's healthy and I just took like all these detoxifying stuff and I was just in a constant state of detoxification. I was dehydrated. Mm-hmm. I was like a wreck. I was broken out all the time. And it's just like. Yeah. I was like, I, the, the main question I get about this is how often should I do colonics? No. And in, in certain circumstances, medically, I think it is appropriate. But for people who are doing it without um, a condition to manage or without even a functional issue, if you're just wiping well, like, your bowels clean every every couple of days, then yeah. you're going to be you're going to be really tired. It's like all those detox teas that they sell on Instagram. Definitely, they're literally just laxatives, guys. Laxatives Different and groups. diuretics. That's and like they're just that's the thing. Like dehydrating yourself. Like sometimes I think like a little bowel cleanse is a good thing for I think sure we get a little skinny stagnant. tea at david's skinny tea at david's yeah Feeling. Like once in a while but like dehydrating yourself chronically to like be a certain size to have yeah. your waist it's just like so unhealthy and so detrimental in so many other ways mm-hmm. it's bad news. Watch it. 
Well, let's let's move into some of this detail. I want to start with a quote. It's a quote from Rumi. I thought you might like this. Mm. Fasting is the first principle of medicine. Fast and see the strength of the spirit reveal itself. Mm. Rumi. I like that. Mm. I don't know if it's actually from them. I found it on the internet. And who knows what's on the internet. Mm. But be from I think Joyce. It's Lo- Brighton, <laughs> be from Ontario. Joyce. Thank you, Joyce. <laughs> Um, but you know, lots of, uh, the elders of medicine have talked about fasting and it used to be a very common practice in naturopathic medicine. And it wasn't made popular again until recently by some of the, um, conventional docs, which I'm totally grateful for because I was using it anyways. Mm. So, um, let's talk about the different types of fasting. So I'm a, I'm a fan of fasting. You're a fan of fasting. I get really sad that I haven't been able to fast in four years. You haven't been able to do anything fun. Nothing fun for four years. Crazy. But like, that's discipline. I know that uh, that's a whole nother conversation I want to have. Yeah. Like I really want to go into that. That mm-hmm. like, you know, anyway. what does it take? What does it take? But all, also like it's uh, anyway that, yeah. that we don't honor that sacrifice really. Absolutely. And that like it should be, I think, predominantly happening mm-hmm. at certain times of life. But anyway. Sorry. Yes, I interrupted you. You were saying that you uh, wish you could be fasting, and you're because sad that you can't. not only for physical, like there's this mental. Like every time I've done a fast, I've also also married it with like a spiritual. Um, I've like I've done uh, a course in miracles for many years. I've done uh, science of mind for many years, and then branches off of that. So I'll do like a, a Michael Beckwith like spiritual path with fasting. And the mental breakthroughs that I have are just as powerful as the physical. I've always had a breakthrough or a realization every time I've cleansed, which I think is just sets in motion something so much bigger than just a physical change. Definitely. Well, I mean, this is where fasting really comes from, right? It's spirituality. Right. It's a complete state change. Every, Every practice has a fast pretty much i think i think i might be right in saying that every practice has a type of fasting associated with it um and so even before hippocrates even before modern medicine Mm. what we call modern medicine um, or the the advent of of medical practice Mm. fasting was performed Mm. i do all kinds of mental fasts all the time yeah yeah yeah. i participate i participate in mental fast because i can't do physical fast right now but anyway well, let's talk about physical fast. The two main types are time-restricted feeding and intermittent fasting. You can call them both intermittent fasting. It doesn't really matter. The difference is this. Time-restricted feeding is not eating for a certain number of hours per day. Mm-hmm. So, for example, 13 hours of fasting per night would be an example of time-restricted feeding. And then intermittent fasting uh, would... I think that was Oscar. Mm-hmm. Did you hear that? Mm. The whole family's going <laughs> to join in on this podcast. <laughs> Why not? And then intermittent fasting really is a term that is used for fasts that are longer than 24 hours. And they don't have to be simply water fasts. They can be mm. low-calorie events. So, you know, normally it's like when you're eating less than 500 calories it, within that time, that would, be cons- that would be called intermittent fasting. Like, for example, if you had 500 calories per day for three days, then that would be like an example of a three-day intermittent uh, fast. Now... I'd like to go through some risks uh, or concerns for both of them. Now, please note this is not uh, medical advice. Always consult with your practitioner before you start anything like this. And that's why I like giving this lecture because you need to know what the risks are of anything, but particularly for fast because they're so popular right now Mm -hmm. that I want to give this talk all the time. I give it to patients all the time too. But Okay, so the difference. Time-restricted feeding. Of course, this changed my life. Mm, I think it's and it's the easiest one to implement. And once you get in the habit, like at first it feels like you're doing a fast or a cleanse. But you get in the habit of it and it builds like this really healthy, um, what we're supposed to do. Like that's why we call it breakfast. It's break fast. Right. Like that's what we're set up supposed to do. Like that's why there's daylight and night. Like the, anyway, continue. Yeah, it keeps your circadian rhythm this, in balance. This rhythm. was my whole difficulty with trying to get my metabolism improved yes. again. I was eating too much before bed. Yeah, and I blame myself. I was making giant meals. Well, I mean, delicious that's when and we healthy. would see each other. Absolutely. But um, but also you were eating all the things I was making for the blog too at night. Yes. Because you would come home and right I'd have all these bed. treats and like healthy and delicious, but high calorie when you eat a tray. Yeah, yeah, definitely. You can't eat a tray. You can't eat a tray of vegan brownies. and. So the most common one that people are doing is the 16 and 8 where they don't eat for 16 hours at night. That's rough. It's rough. Now, pretty much all types of low-calorie diets are contraindicated in diabetes uh, when you're insulin-dependent mm. because you have to be very, very careful with your numbers. But 
in general, time-restricted feeding is quite safe. What people run into sometimes is constipation. Mm. They run into uh, low nutrients. So sometimes you just you end up eating less. Mm. So iron can go down, B12 mm. can go down. Sometimes insomnia. Mm. And it does go away if you stick with it. Where, like, let's say you're doing 13 hours and you're used to eating right before bed. And then you stop doing that. It might be a little bit more difficult to fall asleep. But you, but you might discover that you don't need to sleep as much. You might discover because... It might not be a negative thing. At first, it might feel like a negative thing. In general, you don't need to sleep as much. It's 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 for sure true. Um, so there, there are concerns um, of that nature. But the real concerns for people are when they do longer fasts. Mm. Like even up to the OMAD, which is one meal a day. So that's a 23-hour fasting. A lot of people are doing that in certain conditions to try to improve their immune function and that one can have a whole host of effects because you kind of get you're 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 flirting with going back and forth between running on ketones and running on sugar Mm. so you're also like straight away i think of the people and myself that i've known that would that would bridge on like binging definitely because you get so ravenous and try to shove so much food into that one thing i feel like bad choices would be very easy to dip in to. in this little window like this window is one hour it, it'd be really hard to um yes yeah, in this one hour a lot of people are eating junk you're absolutely right yeah, and, and I'm you not, gotta I'm really just watch not a fan of that we're not talking not talking health no. for this one so and the tricky thing is when you're flirting between running from ketones to carbs mm-hmm. your cortisol and adrenaline are going to be up your body i was just thinking like the roller coaster of Oh, and the impact that has on blood pressure and blood sugar Mm. and heart rate Mm. can be significant for some people. Like some people are really lightheaded and they experience major brain fog. So they they know like within a couple days they can't do it. Right. Anyways, prolonged fasting, like intermittent fasting, like 24 hours or longer, even if it's just simple low calorie. Like my favorite one is called Fasting Mimicking Diet. It's from Mm. the Longevity Diet by Walter Longo. Mm. We eat vegetables and olive oil twice a day for five days. Mm -hmm. The risks. Whenever you're doing prolonged low calorie, you got to watch out because in hypothyroidism, the, me- the metabolism can go down. Mm. So if it can go down in, in hypothyroidism, it can go down without hypothyroidism as well. Mm. So you have to. Be, this was the concern before the new wave of fasting. Like, is this going to have a negative impact on metabolic rate? Like, are mm. we going to be less able to burn calories mm. if we're restricting calories? What's mm. the body going to do? Well, mm. in general, it's pretty resilient. Mm. But for conditions like hypothyroidism not good because then the medications don't work as well because your metabolic rate is lower for a few days most people can respond afterwards but it needs to be medically supervised Mm -hmm. um uh, light cycles or no cycles or altered cycles Mm -hmm. you could lose your period Mm -hmm. um plain and clear your your hormones can change they can go low Mm -hmm. and then you can have no cycles you probably have heard people who have um, switched to a lower calorie diet or a new type of fasting, or maybe they've lost a bunch of weight in other ways. And these women have lost their cycles and that's not ideal, Mm. not ideal. Um, So it's disrupting the the normal rhythm of the month. Mm. So you have to watch out for that. Mm. So that's a concern. Obviously we talked about pregnancy and breastfeeding. Um, We, we want to make sure that uh, in diabetes we're controlling, even if you're not insulin dependent, you have to watch out for the medications because sometimes they can work too well when you're getting mm-hmm. healthier mm-hmm. and it is a good therapy in type 2 diabetes that's not insulin dependent if you have someone who knows what they're doing and they can help you post-surgery you don't want to do a fast because no. you need resources to heal yeah you, seasons like you can have it all but not all at once and that's not your time to shine that's right with fasting that's right rest and heal on that same note it's poor wound healing like mm. if you notice that you're getting sick a lot or mm-hmm. you've got nicks and bruises that aren't healing that's not a good time to fast no um um, the elderly. So if you're over 75, fasting, not ideal. You need resources because then you've reached a point where the average age of North Americans is like 78 to 80. So what's left? You got to have bone strength. Mm. Got to have resources for energy. You don't really want to get into a fasting protocol at that time. Mm. And then obviously no fasting for children. And <laughs> um, you know what people do? People put their kids through weird things. I know, I know. And then malabsorption syndromes. It's not funny. I was thinking about like when your kids just won't eat and like I just like shifted into my mind like, oh no, she's just doing a fast. Yeah, right. They're just being annoying. <laughs> yeah, yeah, anyway, sorry. Yeah, yeah. No. Great job. Yeah. You're on this awesome fasting yeah. protocol. No. And then um, a couple more. The The next one is malabsorption syndrome. So if you have loose stool, 
Mm. Um, or if you actually have a syndrome of malabsorption, like you know that uh, this condition of your small intestine or colon is actually preventing you from getting nutrients, not a good time to fast. Mm. Um, I have a question. Yes, of course. While fasting, are you for taking a multivitamin? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I am. Yeah, mm. I am. Definitely. Mm-hmm. It's good to replenish. Like what I normally recommend for people is a multivitamin mm-hmm. and mineral water. Mm-hmm. Mineral water is a great way mm-hmm. to get through because it prevents the cramps and you don't have to think about taking supplements. Anyways, How do you works. feel about people like women long term taking prenatal vitamins? Long term taking prenatal? You think it for yourself? I prescribe. I like I tell people all the time take it like that are having like hair and nail issues. Sure. Or like dipping into um, a multivitamin. I suggest my prenatal all the time. And then I thought one day. You know, maybe I'm not. Maybe I have some blind spots. Well, here. that's probably fine. But you know, the the thing about the prenatals is they usually have a a, a, a thousand uh, micrograms of folic acid, which. But what if you're taking a sublingual B12 with it? So, um, uh, taking high doses of folic acid not ideal for some people. Oh. So okay. just genetically, some people were concerned with MTHFR. So this uh, and COMT. So these genetic presentations that are very common, it's like 33% of the population or something like this. It's a high number. So, But they wouldn't be the same women looking, also taking like the hair growth because that would be high niacin as well, right? For um, those like I'm hair, not following. all the like hair gummies, like grow your hair. And they gummies. have lots of biotin in them. But don't they have a high niacin as well? They might. I feel like I used to get a niacin flush. They might. Yeah, they might. They'll just usually be vitamin complexes with lots of biotin. Okay. But um, folic acid, we have to be careful with because mm-hmm. for some people with genetic presentations that are, um, I wouldn't say unique, mm-hmm. but um, potentially altered, uh, or I shouldn't say altered. What it is, when you have a genetic presentation that codes for the development of protein that might be less efficient than the, the rest of the population, mm-hmm. anyways, COMT and MTHFR, sometimes when you get folic acid, they get worse, mm-hmm. they get sick and tired uh-huh. so to be careful with folic acid it's not just matching folic acid to b12 you have to also be concerned with matching folic acid to riboflavin which is b2 mm. and sometimes niacin which is okay B3. well then i need a better multivitamin to suggest well unless you're gonna have another baby oh dear god <laughs> uh, dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. Anyway. can she not sleep for six years <laughs> for six years can she do it <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, okay, so those are that's my, my, my top list of conditions that have to watch out for it. So mm. if your cycle is super light mm. or if you've missed some, fasting, not ideal. And I would throw in here if you have had a history of eating disorders, binge purge, yes, if this for sure. even if that like goes if even talking about this gives you that little same. tingle or that little like that, yeah. that thing that comes not up. For like you. back in the day this would have been very triggering for me yeah. and I would have tried to use this information in a negative way. Mm-hmm. So if you feel any of those things coming up for you, I suggest not going down this road. Definitely. No, not for you. Mm-mm. Um any condition that requires extra resources, not a good time. When you want to jump into a fast is when you're looking to use it therapeutically for right. something like yeah. for ex- even like in if, an empowered way even if it's an empowered way for longevity and you just want to do a few days of low calorie mm-hmm. you can mm-hmm. you just have to watch out for the simple things mm-hmm. constipation mm-hmm. did i get really lightheaded mm-hmm. did i get extra tired was the my sleep crazy right now, interu- like I've seen interrupted a lot lately with people anyway because everyone's taking all the high fiber stuff and right. like people are not like if you're going to use flax ground you're using that as something that's going to be pushing bulk through your system. You, you, need, to you drink. need to drink a ton of water more than you're used to. Definitely. Period. You do, you do. So yeah, we, we get stuck into that sometimes. All the time. Well, um, so what I'd like to do here is I'd like to set it up so that um, today is the is the review of when it's absolutely not safe. Mm. And um, next week, talk a little bit about how to optimize because a lot of people who are doing like a program like ours or a pro- or any real low carb program or altered eating uh, food combining program will get interested in fasting once mm-hmm. in a while and I totally I totally support oh, it yeah, as I long think as it's, it's great. safe um, you got to make it optimal so what so, is the perfect yeah, one maybe for you maybe the next episode you should do is your favorite also yeah. types of fasting what you see the most success with and what the benefits are. I'll leave with the labs that we normally check. Mm. Before doing a fast, we normally check electrolytes. Mm. So like magnesium, calcium, potassium, mm. sodium, phosphorus. We also do um, we also do 
thyroid function, mm -hmm. iron, B12. These are some really, really nice ones to get done before you jump into a fast. If it's going to be longer than like 13 hours or 16 hours. Yeah, that's I the magnesium one, it sounds like it's not a big deal. But when I used to do cleanses with like a detox tea, my magnesium would drop so low and I would get like those um, spasms in the ne my neck muscles that would trigger a migraine. Like it was a nightmare. Oh and like I wasn't cluing into what any of it was. I was like, oh, I'm detoxifying. I'm detoxifying. Like, no, girl. Yeah, mine is my calves. My calves will completely wake me up. If I'm not drinking the mineral water, mm -hmm. I'm out of bed. Mm. Can't, like they will lock up for minutes. Mm. Awful, awful. Yeah. Anyways, I hope you all enjoyed that today. That's what, that's what uh, we'll continue with next week. And next week, we've got a great discussion that I hope you all will tune in for, which is um, about societal pressures mm. and um, seasons seasons in life. And uh, we've got lots of things to, to say about that. So we really want to uh, preempt you with the details, uh, w which are that the seasons of life change. Mm -hmm. And the, the pressures that we're experiencing now are unique to humans mm -hmm. uh, of this time. Yeah, and it's so interesting. And we're going to go deep dive. Yeah, deep next dive. Week. So we'll, next week we'll do a bit about optimizing fasting. We'll go into societal pressures. Hope you'll join us. Yes. Thank you so much for listening today. That was Healthy Rebel Radio episode 145. If you want to check us out, where can you find us, Aim? Uh, everywhere. Everywhere. We're on Instagram at Demi Health. Um, we have a newsletter. You can find it on DamienHealth.com. The best way is to get on our newsletter and then everything comes straight to your inbox without being cluttered in all the junk because I, I get off and on. Like sometimes I forget about our Facebook page, which is not good, but sometimes yeah. I do. It's going to happen. You know? I do uh, little talking head videos on YouTube at uh, YouTube.com slash mm -hmm. Health, and you can check us out. Yeah. So thank you so much for tuning in and we hope you have a great weekend. See you. <laughs>